Okay, so we carry on with asymptote and let's start by downloading the tarballs. Uh, right. Got this is slightly different at the moment because we're in TWM. Slightly different behaviour with the links. And we've got a patch as well. So, oh yeah, I've got that dependencies. Um, so we've got Ghost Script, Text Live, Curl, Free Grants, GC. I think we've got. Let's check the list. Yeah, we've done that. So we'll need to. Look at the others that are there. Um, so glue next, I think. So I'll just wait for this other download to finish. Okay, now let's fetch this one. So it's that slow DIAC website again, unfortunately. Okay, so let's extract that. And start the installation. There's no extra options, so I'll just copy and highlight everything that's there. And that's built. So sudo minus E to install. And that's glue done. So I'll shut that down. And next one we've got is GLM. So this one it says the functionality is in header files. And I'll just copy them. So this is going to take a matter of seconds to install. GLM. So we just do these two copy commands. Right, okay, I need to do sudo on the other one. Of course, sudo minus e. That's better. Okay, so let me update my list. And this is GLM. So next one we've got libturpc. We've got that one recommended runtime. I think that's one that's going to be installed. So we don't need to do that yet. Yes, it is. So we'll leave that until a bit later. Um, we've got everything there that's needed. And again, image magic, which is going to be something going to install later, is also a runtime option. So we can now install this. So let's expand it. by patching and then again we export this text arch variable
copy the configure command and we'll just check to see oops, if there are any other options. Um, no, it doesn't look like there's anything, it's just an explanation. So we'll take that configure option. On the build. Okay, so that's installed. Um, so let's run the tests. Okay, it says everything's passed with looks fit. So let's now install. That's that done. Tidy that up and oh, in the belt that didn't install correctly. Right. Now that, I wonder if it's because this sudo command only has user, uh, sorry, bin and bin in its path. Um, right, unfortunately I've just deleted it as I saw that and I need to reinstall it. So let's do it again. Do the patch again, and I'll just copy this all in one go. Wait a minute or so for the build to complete again. Right, so that's built. Now I'm going to run make check. That's okay. So sudo minus esu. Uh, I just want to check the text live to see if it's no, it's not available. Text arch. So yeah, it's not available. Oh, yes, it is text arch. Okay, so make install. Right, now let's get in PDF Latex, no such directory. That's interesting. Um, So 
I said, do we want to see a code or a text live? Text now, text arch. So that is being set there, that's okay. Right, so yes, this is to do with the fact that the path's not being set. When I use sudo e su echo dot path. Yeah, so let's try su. Uh, I'm not sure oh, that's the same. I'm not sure if I've done something wrong or if the configuration has somehow changed in the VLFS book but I'm sure that was the point of passing sudo minus e to pass the user's environment now it could be I'm not sure but it could be let's go here and go to sudo Um, it could be this configuration here, possibly. Where is it? Uh, no, it's not on here. Uh, let me go to etc sudo. sudo is dot d cat xorg yeah I wonder cat o sudo is it that one? no um where it was now that there was a configuration where that was set and I can't remember is it in the profile extra paths is that it extra paths nope I can't remember what it was, I'm sure there was somewhere where the path um, when you attain pseudo privileges it was set to that that uh, value there that you can see user bin and user s bin And I can't for the life of me remember where that was set to check. Which is a bit of a nuisance because everything needs that when you're installing it. So those paths aren't there then. Um, let's see what happens when I do profile. I imagine that will just... Uh, Yeah, that looks better. So, that's what I need to install this. Um, so, if I do ETC profile, I'm going to source it again. Echo dot path. Now, if I do make install, 
Now if we go back here, I'll have to try and find that out and have a look into that. Yeah, no, it's working. Um, I'm just hoping that hasn't caused any other problems with any other package that we've installed. Okay, so I'll come out of that now and tidy it up. So that's async tote, so we can go on to Viber next. And oh, we've got loads of dependencies here. Right, I think these are all these um, Perl dependencies. So we're going to have to unfortunately go through each one of these and install them one by one. Uh, so it's been a lot of finger work to get these done. And as you've probably seen, they don't really take a lot, a lot of time to uh, install. So it looks like the only one we have done is business ISBN but the rest will have to be installed. Um, if you have updated to a new release of text, right now we haven't, so let's start with these. Um, I wonder if it'll be quicker to fetch all of these in one go. having said that I won't know what dependencies each one of these have got unless this is this list includes all the dependencies rather than just the direct requ uh, dependency requirements that um, Biber has uh, but we'll find out we we'll certainly need them all anyway whichever way it is if they are direct dependencies or not That open, I'll take it. It did. And I'll try to center click. Sometimes the center click can be a bit funny on this mouse. Seems to be working okay at the moment. Um, right, so we'll deal with the Perl modules to start off with. Um, right, for some reason that one's gone to the end of the list. Let's put it right back to the beginning. Okay, it's going to be like that, is it? I was hoping that tab list would scroll automatically, but it's not. Right, so that should go there. So I'm going to try and, as I say, fetch all of these in one go. And possibly even try to automate the building, or at least stack the commands together. Um, right, so there's the first one. Right, okay, yeah, so it hasn't got all the dependencies as we'd expect. So we can at least get these top level ones and deal with the others as we come to them, I guess. This is going to take a little while, unfortunately. But it will certainly help with a, a lot of clicking around. And typing and time as well. What 
doesn't help is the screen that I can actually see is the screen that's actually been recorded not the actual screen on the PC so there's a slight delay because of the recording which is why my mouse movements are slightly more tentative because of the, the lag We were getting to the end of the list. It's got to be probably getting towards 20 or so packages here, and then there's all the dependencies that these need. So, which looks like there's quite a few. So, I could spend getting on towards probably half an hour or more sorting these out. It's a shame that these aren't automated if they're just for this package which I guess most of them are it's a shame that this couldn't be automated in the same way that some of the other bulk installations are done uh, right what happened there my mouse has gone again get that back Again, Got to be getting near the end now, surely. In fact, yes, I've just realised I could. I don't need to keep doing wget with these, do I? I can just save them directly now because I'm downloading them on the machine where I need them. So I'll leave this for now. Uh, I can do the rest after I've done this lot. What happened there? Okay, that was the last one, so I'll fetch those and go back to the top of the crocky. That doesn't look a lot. Back to the first one, and again, you have to bear with me while I update my list as I do this. So, we're on Biber. Auto Vivid. Vivification. Vivification. So let's extract this. Next we have auto vivification. Vivification. So I think what I can do is probably copy this and do sudo mercy make install. help speed things up a little bit so that's that one done and I'll shut that one down so the next one's this business ISMN uh, can I automate this even more to name equals no I can't do that I have to do no this won't work it'll be too much effort so right 
That's a TARS XVF. Business ISMN. CD Business ISMN. Recall that command. And that's failed. So pull, make, pull, make, make, test. That's failed. Oh, called tie cycle. I didn't see that. Just blindly going around installing these top level ones. Okay, so let's try downloading from here. So I'll just left click that, save file. Where is this going to put this? Oh, it is going to ask me, that's good. So BLFS. Uh, no, I want it in the so root sources BLFS. Okay. That's better. So tar, that's a bit easier, I think. Tie cycle. So now let's compile this one. That's okay. And that's that done. So let me do my list again. Business ISMN, and that's got tie cycle. Okay, that's that done. So now I can close that down and go back to business ISMN. Try this again. Once again, uh, recall that command to build, test and install, that's all done. Okay, move on to the next one, which is business ISSN. So let's do a copy of that. There's no dependencies on that one. So tar minus extra business ISSN. We call the build and install, and that's that one done. Shut that down. The next one we've got is class accessor. So, so build it. Tidy up. And shut that one down. So next we've got a clone, which should be in this spreadsheet with the looks of it. So I'll just double check that. Yes, indeed, we've installed that. Um, so the next one we've got to do is file find rule, which requires number compare. So let's save that. So let's find that in here. Um, 
this is data compare it's file find role and it's number compare in fact I'll do all of these while I'm here So, data compare. Okay, so this is number compare. Let's install that. So that's number compare. We go back. text glob next uh, what we've done here via per module find file role all right okay i've deleted one too many of the looks of it so text glob is next Download that. So recall the Perl command looks the same. That's in, that's done. Okay. So we go back one, we should be on file find rule. Download that one. Oops. Recall the Perl command. Oops. We call the Perl command. That's done. So I can shut that one down and go back one to data compare, which we've already got downloaded. And just double check there commands so that's done and that's another one gone so data dump next so we're about the fifth of the way through of all the dependencies by the looks of it maybe just under fifth maybe about six uh, data dump, paste that in, it's got no dependencies, uh, did I save that? Yep, oh yes, top level one isn't it? Record the Perl command, install it. done so next we've got data unique ID okay 
so we should have it downloaded. Again, install with the Perl commands and tidy up. So now we've got a dependency on date time. And we've got a load of dependencies here. Now date time locale. Well, this check conflicts. Module runtime. Okay, that's where we start. Right, I'll just sort this out on my list. Okay, so module runtime is the next one. So let's save that. So again, we've got the same instructions. The module build is still listed as a prework because it's no longer in the same All right, okay. So that's okay. That's module runtime. Go back. And we need test fatal. That looks like that's already installed. Yes, it is. We've got that there. So we don't need to install that. We can just go ahead and do dist check conflicts. So let's copy that one in. So again, just copy the Perl commands. That's done. Close that one down and go back one to file share dir. That's got something called class inspector that's required. So class inspector next. Download that, save. So once again, Perl. And it's done. Close that one down. And the next one we've got is file share dir install. So file share dir install. I don't know that. Need to get some sort of sequence here. No. Okay, so I recall the Perl command. And result pass, that's okay. So that's file shared uh, install. Now we'll go back one again. 
V-Shelter. So download it. Um, that one, which we don't reinstall the other one again. So again, we do the same commands. I'm just worrying now that I might miss one that is different. Well, it does have different commands. I have to be careful. So that's file share der namespace auto clean next namespace clean. B hooks end of scope. Well, this is going to take a long time. I can see this. Okay, so next is test requires. So just bear with me while I replicate this on the list. I'll have to try and get this list over as well. I'll have to make maybe LibreOffice a, a priority. Right, uh, where have I gone wrong there? I've done something wrong there. B hooks end of scope. Module implementation. Test requires. Oh, I see. Okay. Test requires. So let's download this one. Install it. Okay, so that's that done. Go back one. And we're on module implementation now. Download. We'll install and tidy up. So it's module implementation. Go back one again. Sub exporter progressive. Oh, didn't that open? Okay, I can get a hold of that one. Download. Okay. So that's that one done. Back one more, variable magic next. So, uh, yep, yeah. open that one. Is that open 
twice than I thought it did. Like I say, this button's a bit iffy. Uh, I'll have to maybe just use the right click. So let's download that. Save it. Target license for your variable. good okay it's variable magic done back one again we've got try tiny done so we're on b hooks end of scope now so download Okay, same commands, and that's done. Again, shut it down, go back one, and we need package stash next. And then CPAN meta check. Okay. Package stash CPAN meta check. Copy that in. So download. Uh, same installation again. It's done. Okay. So now package stash. We've got all the other dependencies installed. Stash done back again, and we can now do namespace clean. So again. That's namespace clean done. Sub identify next. Okay, that's done. So now we can do namespace auto clean. Once 
it's against standard commands to build and install. Back one again, and the next one we've got is params validation compiler. Okay, another nest of dependencies to deal with. Well, this is going to be oh, getting on for a hundred dependencies. We'll look at it at this rate. Right. Class data inheritable. Let's track that one down. Um, exception class and then class data inheritable. done back one again devel stack trace Trace back one, and we can do exception class now. So exception class is done. Now we go to Specio. Okay, eval closure. Eval closure. That's done. So next we've got roll tiny. Done back again, and we've got sub quote. Sub quote.
Pearl. Tidy up. MRO compact. Okay, it seems like we're getting nowhere at the moment because you take a look at the list, it's still there. But as you've seen with this one, approximately maybe half nearly of the modules were already installed. So it should get a little bit easier. <coughs> so Specio. in here right so specio That was a slightly more substantial package. So that's done and we'll go back test without module. Sorry, something's gone wrong here. Prime's validation. Right. Okay. So bring back the curl, curl command, I'll just add on a CD just to save my fingers a little bit more. Okay, I myself test without module. Now test to plug in no warnings. Needs test to suite. Module pluggable. Okay, let's see if we can find that one. All right, module pluggable. I just wonder if I can automate this bit before it's getting quite tedious. This is uh, let's do a uh, name equals something and target minus XVF. Presume 
most of these are I don't know what they are actually I've not noticed um just assume they're g zipped So let's see if this works. If I copy that and paste that in, right, that was a bit easier. Let's just check it's cleared up. Yep, yeah. okay, that might be something I could do then. So that was module pluggable. So next we've got is scope guard. Scope guard. So if I recall this, I'll have to download it first of all. Let's try and do it from here. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's a lot easier. So the scope card done. Sub info next requires importer. Sub info uh, that needs importer. Okay, next sub info uh, we'll just bring back the command sub info. Term table. done back again now we can do test suite or test to suite rather Okay, that's done. Go back and we've got IPC run so we can do this package test to plug in no warnings. Test 
test to plug in no warnings. It's done. Now we're back to params validation compiler. Okay, uh, validation compiler, back one, and we're on date, time, locale now. So we go to IPC system simple. PC system simple. Okay, and now test file shader. Which needs class tiny. Test file shader class tiny. back file copy recursive needs path tiny Okay, uh, back one, test deep. Test deep. RVF in that. Uh, just to give me a bit more confidence in what's going on. Uh, 
although I just realised I won't be able to see the results of the tests, which was a path pass, so that's not such a good idea. Okay, that's that one done. Next is test file. Needs test UTF eight. Test UTF eight under test file. Okay, so let's get that one. I'll remove that V. Test dash UTF eight. That's okay. Now we can do test file. So that's that done. Back one again. So we've got everything now for file copy recursive. done back so, and we can do test file shader Good. Back again, and we now can do date, time, locale. Again, this is a bit more substantial. Seems to be doing a lot more than the other ones. And that's obviously done. Um, didn't see the results for any tests there. Right, unfortunately, I presume, well, it must have passed, I guess, because it went to do the install. So um, I assume if the test failed, it would abandon the uh, sequence of commands and not, not install it, so that's okay. Let's go back here now, date, time, time zone. Class Singleton. Date, time, time zone. Class Singleton. Okay. Uh, 
it looks like the rest have been installed. So date, time, time zone. Okay, back one again, so we're able to do date time. Oh, I see for date time, time zone, the test can't run. Um, I'm just reading on the other screen about time zone because date time hasn't been installed so the test can't run so I might uh, just date time time zone yeah rerun that in a moment so let's go back to date time Let's do this one. And I'll rerun the date time time zone. Yeah, there's more extended tests now, so that's good. So I'll get rid of that. And back to date time calendar Julian. Um, in fact, I'll just put the fact that I've reinstalled that for the tests. Rebuild, rebuild after date time 1.59 for tests. And then I'll put the fact that it's been rebuilt. Okay, so now we're on um, date time calendar Julian I think this just jumped didn't it yeah it did so we've got this downloaded so that's good we'll close that one down and we want to format builder next. So we need date time format and strip time is that. So date time format strip time. Okay, let's fetch that one. Format ST. OK, 
Okay, that's done. Next, we've got params validate. Okay, params validate. So download that one. Okay. I'll just put some space here to make it a bit easier to read what the module name what the module name is. Right, why didn't that work? Oh right, okay, we've got actually a script with slightly different pro uh, slightly different builds, so we've got to do Perl build dot pl right let me un extract this from the beginning validate I should remove it shouldn't I So Perl build.pl begin filed. We may need to build can locate module build in ink. You may need to install the module build module. Ink entries checked. Oh, uh, oh, now I wonder if it's one of these requirements I've made the mistake of opening all these Perl files up to do, but it could be one of these that we're due to do, um, but haven't come to yet, so... Let's have a look for, no, I've downloaded them all, haven't I? Um, module build. Let me search on my list. So, module dash build. Yeah, we haven't done that one by the looks of it. Oh, hang on. It's colon, colon. No, we haven't done module build. We've done module implementation. I think we've done the two test ones. They look vaguely familiar. So test. Fatal. Yeah, we've done that. And... Test requires are done, yeah. So it's the first dependency, so that's a bit of a boo boo there. That's why I stopped. I used to open up all the dependencies for a package, and I realized it was causing me this exact mistake that's happened now, or not mistake, but this problem. So I need to look for module build in the tabs. I can't look for the names because they're all within the same web page, unfortunately. So the title of the web page is just Perl modules. So let's look for module build. So these are in alphabetical order. So if I jump L module build, yep, there it is. So I need to do this one next, and this is a 
This uses this standard build that we've been using. So I'll pull this back here. Module build. Funding support disabled. Created. Right, well it's not stopped the build. It doesn't mention anything in the book, so about any dependencies. So that's okay. So I need to put in module build as the next dependency just before params validate. And just hope there's no other dependencies like this. Um, right, that's installed. So I'll get rid of that. I'll go back to the yeah, params validate. So this should build now. So let's change it. I think I left the directory there. Yeah. So Perl build.pl right there now it's working now I can run build build test and then build install okay so that's done right that's params validate So I'll get rid of that, go back here, and we need to do format built and builder next. Uh, is that right? Date, yes, date time format builder. Yep. Right, so this will have been downloaded because it's one of the direct dependencies for Viber. So date, time, format, builder. That's all done. Get rid of that. Now what I think I might do next, which will be safest, is I'm not just going to go through these in order. I'm actually going to, in, first of all, just install the dependencies, or sorry, yeah, the dependencies that haven't, or the modules that haven't got any dependencies and see what's left there just to try and mitigate this problem of potentially having modules that I've opened up in the tabs here, uh, which will therefore change the colors of dependencies. Um, there is maybe a chance I've missed something optional or recommended. Um, so hopefully that's not caused any problems. So I'll start with this um, EUCJ uh, encode EUCPAS ASCII, whatever it is, I can't say that because that hasn't got any dependencies. So I'll put that in. Uh, oh no, I don't need to save this because it's already downloaded. So encode the U. So that's done. Right, how an extra that hasn't got any dependencies, but it's got a slightly different build method. It could be that I've got the worst out of the way, so we'll just have to see. Right, so I'll have to do this one manually then. Um, encode 
10 extra. So I'll copy and paste these commands. And that's a pass, so make install. Make install. Okay, there's going to be one of them for a while. And that's done. So the next one, yeah, this one hasn't got any dependencies. Encode just 2k. Um, so this looks like a normal build. Encode JIS. So that's all okay. Next we've got file slurper. Uh, I think that test warnings has already been built, so I better check that now. Let's copy file slurper in. Test. Yep, that's been done quite early on. So file slurper. So that's done. Uh, looks like most of these are just on their own now, uh, which is good because it means we can get through them sooner. So IO string. That's okay. IPC run three. IPC run three. Lingua Translate. <laughs> All okay. Right, that's got some dependencies. So I'll skip that for now. So is that one. Right, log log for Perl. Oh, in fact, thinking about it. Um, Just thought if I go back to these ones here, in theory, I should be able to look for these because all of these dependencies are in alphabetical order. So, as long as, for example, list all utils, these two would alphabetically become after list utils in the list of the tabs. 
So as long as these two aren't in this list, so list more utils is the next one. That's not there. That's some utils. Same with this list uh, export a tiny that would have been installed previously because we've got past the E's. That's list more the utils again. Um, oh, access, sorry. And then we're on to log for Perl. So I think as long as I'm aware of that, I'll carry on doing these in order, which may be preferable. So if I go to list some utils next, that's got list some utils access. I haven't seen that one, so I can open that one up next. Uh, module implementation, that comes after L, so I'd have to have a look at that one. As does test leak trace, right, this is getting messy. So first of all, I need to look for module implementation. There's going to be one of these here if it exists. Module, no, it's jumped to a P there. So that module implementation has been installed. I don't know if I can find it. So list some utils access is the next one. So test warnings, I know has been installed. So that's okay. So test leak trace hasn't been installed. So let's open that one next. And there we're at the bottom of the hierarchy. So we could do that one next. So uh, I think it was list all utils. There's some utils, some utils access, and then leak trace. So this should prevent the problem of potentially missing dependencies the way I've opened all the tabs. Right, so I'll need to fetch this and save it. Recall and change the name to test, oh, I've got caps on. Test, leak trace, that's all done. Go back one, test warnings is already in. So list some utils access. So I need to save this. List some utils access. That's installed. Now list some utils. That can go. Save that. So this should be zero five nine. That's all okay. Back one again to all utils. And this needs list utils by. Well, I haven't seen that module. And it was blue anyway, so it's okay. List utils by. Save like that. Oh. 
that's done. Go back again. So back to list all utils, which is a top level. So we don't need to download that. So just copy it into my list. And put the name in list all utils. Okay. So on to list more utils now. Again, so exporters prior to this. List more utils. Access logically would be straight after this, but it's in blue anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do exporter tiny first. And that's got no dependencies. to tiny so download that that's good Back again, list more utils access. Like I say, that would be the logical next one, but it's in blue, so it can't have been opened previously. So list more utils access. Put that in. Shut down the tab. List more utils. Oh, I've not downloaded it. Access. All done. Go back to list more utils. So this is the top level one. So in theory that should be it. Yes it is. That's done. Now we've moved on to log Perl. That's got no dependencies. Look for Perl. So that would have been downloaded. Okay, that's done. Move on to the next one. Okay, so IO sockets would have, I think that gets installed in Linux from scratch, I think. Uh, so, but it's before L anyway. Make CA is obviously that was one of the first packages we built in BLFS, so it's just this one we need to do. Oh, crikey, that's a lot. So I need to look for, well, HTTP daemon would have come before this one. LWP, try tiny is the only one I need to check, I think. And probably test needs. So I'm going to search for those on the spreadsheet. So the first one is called HTTP. Demon, right, that hasn't come up. I'm 
interestingly. Oh, have I missed that then? Oh, no, I keep putting the dashes in here, but here on description, they're colons. Right. Yep, that was audience, that's been already installed. So try tiny next. Try tiny. Yeah, we've got that one. Test fatal. We've got and needs. In fact, those last three are all installed at the same time. They're one off the other. So they're all there. So what we've got to do is to follow the dependency list. So this is LWP protocol, goes to LWP. WPerl, is that the one? Oh yes. Right, so we need to go to file listing first. HTTP date, again I'm sure we've done that, it's earlier than... No, it isn't. File list. Well, sorry, it's earlier than what we've done so far, which is LWP, it starts LWP protocol, so that will be in. So file listing. Add that in and download it. File listing. That's all passed, which it wouldn't have done if HTTP date wasn't there because it's required. Back. So the next one we've got is cookie jar, HTTP cookie jar, which needs these. I recognize that URI, I was pretty sure test deep. Let's check that. Test deep. Yes, we've done that. And test requires. Yep, done that. And I'll just check URI that I'm pretty sure it's been done. Yes, it has. So we can put in Um, that one there, which is HTTP cookie jar, because all those dependencies are in. Okay, so download that. That's done. HTTP cookies, HTTP message. Again, the HTTP comes before LWP, so that, that is definitely in. So let's put that into the list. Okay, download it. and install it. Yep, done. Back again. So cookies, that was, oh sorry, 
the dependency, wasn't it, of cookie jar, is that right? No. Don't know why that's still... Oh, I must have looked it up since. Right, okay. Demon, we've done. HTTP negotiate. HTTP negotiate. Download. That's done. Back again, HTML parser. Needs the HTML tag set. So HTML parser. Each HTML tag set. So download. HTML tag set. That's done. Now we can do HTML parser. Okay, that's done. Back again, uh, net HTTP. Net HTTP. As you've seen, we've got URI, so that's not a problem. Okay, that's good. Back again, www.robotrules. Right, it says libwwperls required at runtime. Right, so that makes sense that we install this now because it's only a runtime requirement, whereas libww perl where is it yeah we need www robot rules as a requirement for libww perl so let's make sense to do this next so www robot rules Download it. And install it. Okay. Lastly, we just need this. One here, test requires internet. So we'll download that and build it. Oh, 
all done back again so now we can do lwp or libww pearl so we'll download that one Open install this package if you want HTTPS. Alright, that's one we're gonna install next anyway, so let's build this one. Okay, that's done. Shut that down, go back. So this is the HTTPS one. So we've got everything we need now. I'll put this in the book. And we can build this. LWP. That's done. Let's just take a look, see how many we've got left now. Oh, we're getting through them, so that's good. Right, so the next one is rec, pass rec descent. Right, there's no dependencies, so put that straight in. We've already downloaded that. So pass rec descent. That's done. Right, Perl IO, this has got test exception as a dependency. And that's got sub up level as a dependency. Uh, so I lost my thread here. Uh, Perl IO UTF 8. Oh yes, there it is. Right, so sub up level. Download that. All done. Back to test exception. Download that. Okay, and then the top level module, Perl IO UTF struct, uh, strict, sorry. So I've already got it because it's a top level one. There it is. And that's done. 
the next one we've got is regex common regex common so again we've already got that downloaded That's done. Now I've got sort key. And again, that would have been downloaded because we're still at the top level dependencies. Yep, it's done. So now we've got text bib text, which has got this dependency. Looks like we've done these two already, so that's handy. So bib text needs config auto conf. to conf so download config auto conf oh I've deleted too much haven't I it's better That's done. Uh, back one, we need to do ext utils lib builder. ext utils lib builder. So download that. ext utils lib builder okay right so this is a different installation so that's worked and sudo minus e build installed and that's done So now text bib text can be installed. Text bib text. Right, okay, another another one of these. It's funny every time I check to see the instructions it's normal when I forget to check it's not the normal way of doing it so sods law okay install it and it's done right so now we need text csv text csv which needs text csv access okay 
Okay, so download that. Text CSV. Underscore XS. Understand what happened there? Do I remove? No, I didn't remove too much. Can I open no such file or directory? Oh, because it's a TGZ. Right. Okay, I'll do this by hand then. Text CSV underscore CD text CSV underscore Build it. And sudo minus E. Make install and that's done. Text CSV underscore. Right, that's done. And now text CSV. This is two oh three, this one. Okay, that one's gone. So we're finally coming to the end now. Text Roman is next. All done. Now Unicode collate. That's good. Right, so we've got one dependency here. We've got all those dependencies, so we can do mime char set. Next. So I've done like that. All oh, right, it's asking me some questions. Oh, right, it's different instructions. Let's start again then. All oh, right, they're piping yes to it, so there must be a few questions. That's it. Done. So, B 
back one Unicode line break which is a top level dependency of Biber so we should have that downloaded Unicode line break that's done next we've got libxml simple which requires lib uh, sorry xml lib xml which requires alien lib xml alien build download gitlab alien build Wow, well, we're getting really deep here. File which, and we're at the bottom. So let's have a look at this. Right, so file which is the next one. So download. File which, that's done. Go back one. FFI check lib. Did that just open up there? It did. Capture tiny path, tiny test suite. Just make sure none of these have been opened. Alien. Alien build. Alien lib XML. XML. No, okay. So FFI check lib is next. That looks like it should have all the dependencies. So let's download it. FFI check lib. Yep, that was okay. Alien build, uh, no, sorry, file chader next. Okay, download. And put this in. File change der. Yep, that's okay. So now alien build 2.77. Download. Okay, that's done. Alien build plugin download GitLab. Alien build download plugin GitLab. Alien build plugin. It's done. So <laughs> the name was longer than the actual time it took to build it. Um, 
So alien lip XML two. Alien lib XML two. That's done. XML lib XML needs XML sacks. XML namespace support. XML namespace support. Okay. Now we can do XML sax base. XML sax base. Okay, that's done. Back again to XML sax. So this uses a variant of the build instructions. Uh, let's see if we can just adjust that. It looks like it's just that yes command again. So we're doing XML sax. One oh two, is that right? Yes it is. So we just need to put a yes and pipe that into Perl and the rest is the same. Okay, that's done. Lib, uh, sorry, XML, lib XML now. XML, lib XML dash two. Okay, and then the top level XML, lib XML simple. So we've already got this XML, lib XML simple. That's done. So we're down to our last two modules now. So XML, lib XSLT. X S L T that's done and the very last module XML writer so again that's already downloaded XML writer and at last that's done uh, 
Oh, it says it is possible to install all missing dependencies automatically. You must first install module build using. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, well, that might have been a better way of doing it rather than doing it by hand, but anyway. So it looks like I've just got to install one more for the test. So let's do that now. So algorithm diff. And done like that. It's done. Next is text diff. Download that one. Text diff. And test differences. Test differences. Okay, so that's all done, ready to install Biber. So just looking back at those modules and just going to see how many modules just installed um well it is about a hundred or so um yeah we started with auto vivification Uh, yeah, 118 packages. One of them was reinstalled twice, but uh, there's basically 118 installations of Perl modules, which I have to say has been the most monotonous part of the build so far. Uh, I presume that automatic installation will be well, probably slightly easier once I'd started stacking the commands up. Um, but I suppose it's up to you if you want to try that or do it the way I did it. Okay, so it's time to start the installation of Biber. I don't think I've downloaded no I haven't downloaded the tarball yet so let's fetch that. Oh uh, let's just download it from there. And extract it. And looks like this is a Perl program in itself. So Mozilla CA is not found. Okay, so why would that be? Oh, I see. Then run Perl build and prompts and run build install depths. Let's 
let's have a look at this again. So, all right, so, so use that method to install module build, which I think we've got. Yeah, we've installed that. Then run Perl build. PL, and when it prompts you, become the root user and run build install. It says we use C as noted above. It will use Mozilla CA instead of using system certificates. Oh, I see. Sorry. If you install the above dependencies using BLF instructions, does it mean the dependencies below? Then But that is not needed unless CPAN was used. To install the modules, right? Okay, BLFS patches, right? Okay, so that's something we can ignore. So we can just run build, oh, go back to Biber, run build, and build install by the looks of it. Yep, that's it. Oh. Okay, so that's buy but done. So now we move on to DVI SVGM. And it looks like we've got all the dependencies for this. So let's download that one. So this looks like it's losing that text arch again. Let's see if it's still set. Yes, it is. So let's build and install. Build, sorry, configure and build, not build and install. And when this is done, do the make check. Okay, let's run the test now.
Okay, so that has finished building. So let's try and install this in the usual way. Uh, so do right. That seemed to work that time. Yeah, it's installed it under the opt text opt text live directory, so that looks okay. So DVI SVGM Next we've got Zindi and we've got the dependencies for this one, so let's Download the package and the pa okay, that's not downloading it, it's actually trying to view it. So we'll right click it, do save link as, and save it directly into the VLFS directory. So Zindi. And looks like there's nothing specific to modify. So again, this package actually explicitly sets the text arch. So it's worth bearing in mind that DVI SVGM doesn't, but it does use it. So it's worth checking to see if that is set or not. And if it isn't, use... Uh, that line to set it. So I'm not sure if that's an oversight or not. Uh, but let's paste that. Uh, let's change into the directory first and repaste that and start the build. Okay, and make install. So I'll just check again that this is installed correctly. Yes, it looks to have done. So that's Zindi. And I think that is the last, yeah, that's in fact the last package in the book because it just goes onto the license for the book. So that is all of TextLive installed. Um, I think what, I'm going to do now is to go back and well um, I know a lot of depends dependencies have got this FOP as a dependency for um, so this FOP I'm looking at the wrong screen as a dependency for documentation together with, uh, well, this Doxygen looks like I was going to install as well. So, oh yes, let's finish this Doxygen first. And I think I might go and look at FOP and then I'll go and tidy up any outstanding rebuilds I've got because I've got lots to do um, in the in the um, spreadsheet. Tidy them up a bit and then carry on with actually building some more packages. So the last thing to do here is to have a look at this Sapien, which hasn't got any dependencies. So let's look for Doxygen. And we're going to look at Sapien next. Okay, so let's download that. And tidy up Zindi. Okay, 
So this looks like it's just a case of copy and paste. Okay, let's run some tests.
Okay, so those have passed. Uh, this is four tests. But, um, I think it did a little bit more than four tests there. So let's now install. And let's say pin done. So now I can go back to Doxygen and looks like that's ready to be installed. So let's download the package. Oxygen. When untiring, you may see messages such as ignoring unknown extended header keyword. It can be safely ignored. So we've got a grep command here to fix some Python scripts. Uh, let's check there's some options here for the building. So let's create the temporary build directory. Then copy the CMake command. And just cross reference what's in there. So, debuild. So, we can build a Qt5 GUI front end because we've got Qt installed. External search tools could be useful. Turn that on. And we can add support for C-Lang passing because we've got LLVM and C-Lang installed as well. So that's configured. Let's now build the package. Right, so let's finish building. Let's run the tests. Okay, that's got one failure. Um, it does say one's known to fail. Yeah, that looks like it there, actually. Yep. So that's okay. Uh, we can generate some documentation. We've got Python, text live, and Ghost scripts installed. So let's configure for that and make the documents. That's kind of done. 
Oh, so this is, uh, for some reason, complaining about UTF-8 as well. Um, I'm using UTF-8, so I'm not sure where that is, but it's failed right at the end, so what we've got on the output of that, I'm not sure. Let's try doing make install and see what happens. Yeah, it's not going to work. Try that again. No. Okay, the UTF encoder can't decode bytes. Let's start byte. Um, let's try changing the lang. Uh, is it? I'll see all. No. Um, let's try C. No, let's try en underscore gb dot iso 8859 one is it? Uh, one is a. Oh, it is, it is ISO 8591. So I don't know why that is failing. If I had to start right. Let's try putting this in the browser and see what comes back. So is it something in this file here, line 69, buffer decode? Is this where it's failing? That's where it's failing. So it looks a very similar line where this is breaking to that bit of code there. In this case, the coding is so you have to. Oh, is this the code that's calling it that the bloke's having trouble with?
So is it just to change encoding to Windows 1252? Uh, where I do that, I do not know. Uh, let's have a look at the cows again. I'm not sure if any of these would get around that. It doesn't look like it. Um, let's try using POSIX. No. It must be something to do with the source file. I presume it's this language dot doc is it? Uh. Right, it's trying to create that file, I take it then. Right, I think what I'll do is just pause the video while I try and sort this out. Okay, right, I think I've found a solution. Um, it lets it compile at, at any rate, whether it's the correct solution or not, I don't know, but I'll show you what I did. So I've just extracted the uh, tarball again, afresh. So there's the grep command. There's the make the command. Copy the C make. I'll edit this to put in the extra options. So the wizard on. Search on. Now whether this is just a problem with Doxygen or if it's going to be a problem with all documentation, I don't know. Um, it's just a fix, particularly for Doxygen. So I won't really know until we try to install other packages that use Doxygen. So that's Doxygen compiling as you saw before. Um, so we'll just wait a minute or so for that to complete. Right, so that's Doxygen Rebuilt. Let's run the tests. Yeah, why is that not copying? Try that again. That's strange. It looks like the terminal has stopped printing up. That's better. I'm not sure what happened there. That's happened once before, so if that's a bug with some one of the 
tools like bash or something so we got that single failure again to do with this unicode value 061 so that's okay that's the same as before so when i run cmake to configure it for documentation build documents and it fails um what i did i found that um it appears this program here is the program that's doing the translating and it seems that for some reason the different character sets are getting a bit muddled up um, so what I did was to edit that and if you see it says it's at line 1464 where that fails so if we edit that and I'm at line 1464 here so it's this line that's failing here um, what you can do I found from those stack exchange post that you can actually type in the encoding here and specify it um, was it brackets so ISO 8859 underscore 1 is what I used um, if that was the right syntax let's try it again so if I now try and make docs again Um, perhaps it wasn't that. Or was it on the read? Oh, was it? Oh, I can't remember now. I've closed it down. Was it? dot encoding let's try that no, now I've shut it down as well let's try and find it again uh, private window and it's uh, I'm getting a different error now aren't I so I'll have to remove that It was at this one here. No. Oh, it was this. Coding equals that's what I've done wrong. So it's uh, was it there? Well, that wasn't it. Wasn't it either? Right, I think that looks it was similar to this. I can't find the uh, actual post that had the syntax that I use now. I wish I'd left it up. Um, Right, that's the one I've already looked at. I've looked at that one. I don't think it was this one either, was it? Oh yeah, that might be it then. Um, encoding equals ISO 8859 underscore one. Yeah, that looks like it actually. Yeah, that was it. So that was um, 
and just move this out of the way and cuss it to refer to it again. That it wasn't the exact post that I found before. It was a bit more, made it a bit clearer. Um, but basically at the, so it's the line prior to where the error occurred. It's on the open. I've specified this character set to use ISO 88591. So just adding the comma, space encoding, and then the character set in quotes. And as you can see, that seems to have fixed it. It's come to the end. So now I should be able to do make install and install the documents or the man, man pages. So um, let's try using man doxy gen. Make sure it's legible. It certainly looks like it. So it seems to have worked. So whether that's something I've configured wrong, or I haven't configured something, or whether that is something that needs to be updated in the manual, I don't know. Um, I even tried it without the extra options that I turned on, and it was still failing in exactly the same way. So I know it wasn't any of these options here. Um, there's something happened. Um, and I even tried, although I've got my lang set now to UTF, um, even with that set to ISO 88591, it still failed. So, um, yeah, not really sure what that was all about. So, anyway, that's resolved. It does seem to work okay. So, we can tick that one off as being done. Um, so I'll tidy that up. So we should be able to hopefully install any documentation that needs Doxygen. Um, so what I'm going to do now is have a quick look at FOP to see what that entails. So it looks like we've got everything to install FOP. So I'm going to do that next because there was a few dependencies waiting on FOP. So let's uh, have I got it first. Let's check. No. So uh, get out of the habit of downloading it with wget now. So let's download the main file, the main tarball, the Maven build system. And some objects as well. Okay, so I'll go back there. So ensure Java Home is set correctly for beginning the build. So let's just echo that. Yep, that's set. Um, have the downloads finished? Yep, they have. Oh, that's the top of the list. Let's go to the bottom. Yep, they have. So I can't. I don't know if Control Q gets rid of it. No, I'm not sure how to get rid of this window now. So I'll just stick that down here. Um. So the first file is called FOP. So let's extract that. So we need to unzip the hyphenation package and move it into the right place. Extract Maven into the temporary directory with the looks of it. So we need to make some settings to looks like to ignore the standards or ignore the checks and then there's no optional parameters for the compile so we'll just copy all of this
Okay, so it's built. It says the package comes with test suite with the Java infrastructure installed. The book does not allow running it, but I did notice there were J units running. So there was some testing going on. I can't go and scroll back so far now. So whether the testing is integrated into the build or if the test suite is additional, I don't know. So now let's install this. That's done. And we remove the temporary Maven file that was installed. And what have we got here? To use FOP, using FOP to process some large formatted ob objects, is that? Commit memory error errors. Unless you add a parameter to the Java command using the FOP script, you may receive basically out of memory errors. Okay, so we need to copy this now. On that sounds quite a lot of memory. Um, so I would imagine if you've probably got four gigabytes, that's a lot to take up, um, even possibly on eight gigabytes. Um, so you might want to consider, um, you know, whether you can run this if you've got a very low amount of memory. Um, otherwise, you might want to possibly increase that if you've got lots of memory. So I'm actually going to put that as 1024 to give myself a little bit of uh, room. I'll just close that with a quote. And put the rest in. So I'll just display that. That's on the home directory. So that's bearing in mind that that will only be on, oh, that's on root. I've done that for. Um, let me remove that because it's more likely to be used on the user, the ordinary user. So I'll remove, oops. Uh, what am I doing? I'm talking and uh, trying to type at the same time. So I'll come out of root. I'll copy this again. I'll just edit it this time quicker. So I'll just remove this RAM installed with the angle brackets and put in 1024 for one gigabyte. And then back as root again. Um, we need to update the system wide path or profile, sorry, with the path. Running FOP can be somewhat of a boast. The default login level can be changed from info to any of these by changing the properties. So I think I'll leave it as it is for the moment until I uh, decide whether it's too much or not. So that's FOP installed now. So I'm going to log out and log back in again. So it's FOP there. No, it's not. Probably need to log out further. Um, let's do source etc profile. Right, yes, it is there now. So I wonder if I do uh, log out again and do su minus kernel text. Log in again now. Echo dollar path. Yep, pops in there. I don't want to log out completely because it's external close and I'll have to 
load it up and size it up and everything so it's just a bit of faff so I've got the uh, fop in the path so that's the main thing so that's fop completed so let's update the list and put that in right so what I'm going to do now is to go right to the top of the list and look for anything that can be reinstalled so the first thing I've got is docbook xsl nons 179 and it says that's waiting for Apache Ant, Python 2, Ruby 3.2.2 and Zip 3 so let's look for that here docbook xml nons and as you can see we've got all these dependencies now so that'll be the first one to install or reinstall rather XSL So we'll do a patch. And extract the documentation table. Install the style sheets. In fact, this doesn't look like it runs anything. Copy some documents. Oh, oh right, yes, I've become root, and I'm not paying attention to the screen properly. CD minus E S U. So let's rerun this install again. Copy the documents again. So I don't need to delete the old versions. that into the catalog and uh, we don't need to do that so I'm not sure why I needed all these dependencies apparently they didn't run oh we used the run our uh, runtime so that was unnecessary to reinstall that then So I'll actually delete that to say that it needs to be reinstalled because it's just runtime. Uh, right, so then I've got XMLTO to be reinstalled after FOP. So let's go back. XMLTO. Let's reinstall this one. So again, you can see all the dependencies are highlighted now. So there's no... Please welcome this thing that needs to find some e-links. Okay. So I'll just copy and paste that. Run make check and make install. Okay, wasn't anything apparent there that there was something there? No, there isn't apparently anything that it did to. Oh, yes, there it is there. 
and it looks like that's the line where it's installed some PDF documentation and so on. So that's XML TO, so let's mark that as being rebuilt now. Uh, XML TO. I need to find a better way of doing this because I'm flicking backwards and forwards in the spreadsheet. Um, so it's been rebuilt. Uh, perhaps if I open up some tabs. That might be the best way in the browser I've got. So the next one's X org proto libx dmcp right let's do them too see how we get on Right, uh, so Xorg Proto is the next one. So this is for FOP, so it's to build some additional documentation. And that was XMLTO. So proto so we can put the legacy equals true in so let's build the oh no that's outside of BLFS um, I suppose we could do it just in case there's anything that requires it It does say such as, but it doesn't specifically say that there's whether there's anything else in the beyond the list of scratch book that uses it. Okay, Ninja. No work to do. That's interesting. So do one C S U. So that's done. So that's Xorg Proto built. And next we've got his Libex DMCP. Libex DMCP, which is that one. Right. Okay, there's no options for actually installing, so whether it's automatically detected or not, I don't know. Uh, Lib X DMCP. Figure and make. Run checks. All good. So now let's do make install. 
That's okay. So that's been built. And as I'm purely installing these to get the documentation now that we've got FOP installed in Tax Live, so um, and there are probably going to be some other rebuilds um, where we've now installed other packages just for a complete build. So that's those two. Let's copy rebuilt to that. Now look down, right, next one I've got is font config, rebuild off to curl and Jason C and tax live. So let's look for that. Font config. Tuning font config. There it is there. So yes, we've got additional Package is installed, so let's extract it. So let's copy the configure command and we can remove disabled docs to build our own. Apart from that, there's no other options mentioned. So now let's build it. And these are the actions where it's building the documentation here. So you can see that it's actually working. So that's done. Let's run the tests again. And previously one test failed due to missing curl. So I would expect that to pass this time. Okay, so yes, that is a complete pass with the looks of it. Yep, no failures at all, so that's good. That shows that that has been picked up as well. So, let me mark that off as being completed. Um, and we'd better install it, I guess. And if you did not remove disable docs from configure, you can install the pre generated documentation. So that does look like it's tried to install um, some documentation stuff there. Root directory, oh, that hasn't caused any problems. Okay, so that's font config reinstalled. Okay, so um, C make rebuild after all optional builds, including QT. So I do vaguely remember there was a a, um, a 
gooey tool I think for for C make. So I'll mark that as being rebuilt and oops put that into be rebuilt now then. Uh, where's it gone? C make. Okay, so let's find that one now. So let's extract it. Run this set command. Now the bootstrap command. Uh, command explanation system libs. No system JSON CCPs. Okay. So we've got all those available. Right, so we can add in this Qt GUI. Now and also add in this parallel to run with multiple jobs, put the number of cores you've got available there. So let's time that, see how long that bootstrap takes. Right, so that's bootstrapped and now we can build this. So time make. Right, so that's built. Let's run the test now. So we do this command here. And 
change the N to 16 from number of cores available and wait for that to finish. Okay, there's a couple of failures there. Um, I can't remember what failed last time now, if, if at all, anything. Um, so there's something to do with SVN and finding all modules. So it says about running individual modules if you want to guess investigate a problem with problem one test you can looks like you can run them individually so let's try that the first one and we'll do the second one as well so it looks like the first one Okay, it looks like it failed. Use rerun failed to rerun the failed ones verbosely. Let's try that. So it can't load the SVN libraries by the looks of it, which is strange because, oh, unless it's because it's requiring a server. Let's see where that is. Repose, yes, yeah, doesn't exist. So 
So that explains why that one's flooding. I don't know why it doesn't exist. So, dot zero. No, it doesn't exist at all. So, it could be an option that we didn't install in SVN, maybe. Um, what's SVN required for this? Yes, it is. All right, for testing, let's have a look. So, I presume that didn't exist before when we tested because I don't think there's any errors when we installed before. Uh, is this for rebuilding this one? Oh, yes, it is. Um, right, I might actually install or reinstall this and then come back and oops, and reinstall, uh, sorry, retest this one. So let's come back out of this and just take a look here it needs gnome key ring we've got that let's just double check so gnome key ring demon yeah we've definitely got it installed um I don't think it's got to be rebuilt. Let me check that. No, so that's okay. Lib secret. I'm pretty sure we've done that. Uh, rid of that. secret tool is a program yes it's on there okay so I'm going to reinstall subversion so adapt some scripts to use Python 3 Tap to the build to Ruby 3.2 and install it with the following commands. Let's see if there's anything else we can add to that. What's the passion is? Before internal, YouTube internal. So we can try enabling the Java high-level bindings oops with JUnit okay we can probably try and download a JUnit file to test the bindings let's have a go at that J unit, which version does it need? It doesn't say, does it? Oh, J unit 4, okay. Right, this is that's a bit misleading. That still says J unit 5 there, but we are on J unit 4. So let's get the latest one, I guess. Go there. Plain old jar. To your clasp, do we need both of these? Do we? Uh, let's take a look. So it's that file there, copy link address. Um, right, let's get another terminal up and get sources 
BLFS. Let's. Oh, why am I doing this here when I can do it from the browser? I keep forgetting. Uh, right, so let's save that. And I'll download Hamcrest as well in case that's needed. So with JUnit equals and the location will be this location because that's where we just downloaded it to. Oh, right, just didn't put a space there. So let's try that again. So let's just take a look to see what it's done. Okay, all looks good. So now we'll run make. Okay, so to build the Java bindings, issue this command. Right, 100 errors, four warnings. That's funny, whenever I try to build this in the past, it always seems to fail. Package org JUnit does not exist, and yet we specified the location as it stated. Local. So it suggests to put it into into the user local Java lib JUnit path. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'll copy it to. Well, in fact, it won't be. Oh, is it user local? Let's have a look. Local Java. No, there's no such place. So let's look at opt. Java, no, JDK, local, no, lib. So we could put it in there, although it's not strictly part of the um, JDK. So, um, oh, do I have to specify the whole file, do I? Oh, right, okay. That's what's happened then. So, I'll have to start again. Scrap and said and we call the 
configure command, put in a junit.jar. And run make again. Okay, so now I'll rerun this command. It doesn't look like it's fin uh, worked again. So those are just warnings, actually. Yeah, 100 warnings, so that's not a problem. I think that's actually worked. Um, it just looks a bit scary. So let's try the Perl bindings now. I seem to remember these didn't work, or one of them didn't work. But I'm hoping now that we've got a fuller dependency um, coverage, if you like, that these will work a bit better. So that one's worked. Let's try the Python bindings. Right, that looks like that's worked this time. I think that was the one that failed before. And that's worked as well. So it's obviously something to do with missing dependencies. So let's run make check.
Okay, so that has finished and looks like all the tests passed. Um, 162 were skipped, 80 were expected to fail. So that's a good run. Test the results of any of the swig bindings, you can run these commands. So let's check those. So that says pass. Let's try the Python bindings. So that says OK, that's good. And the, finally the Ruby ones. Well, that says 100% passed, so um, I think that's all okay for the bindings. Now, I'm not sure about the Java HL tests. Um, there doesn't seem to be any specific test for them. Again, whether the unit tests were run when it was built, which is possible. Um, I can take a punt and do something like check Java HL, see if that... Yes, it does work. I'm not sure why that's not in the books. Oh, sorry, in the book. Why well, those instructions aren't in the book, but yeah, that, they've passed as well, so that's okay. So now we can uh, install these. So we'll install the main program first and the documentation. So some warnings about some files not being installed. Install the Java high level bindings. Right, since we saw this before with this swig bindings, I think it was. Yes, it was the same error. I can't find this SVN client one, so I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Oh, there's the Java bindings there. Make a check Java HL with Lang C. So I don't know why that is. That's something that would need to be investigated. Let's try the Perl Swig bindings.
So that's worked. Yeah, that pearl has come up with the same error as well, or slim, similar type of error. And again with the ruby as well. So I'm not going to spend too much time uh, worrying about that. Uh, I'm just trying to do a complete build as possible really for for the video um, all right I've got one failure now I've run it this way with Lang Eagle C that's interesting didn't, didn't get that before it could be that the installed Java shell is partially installed maybe So yeah, that's probably as best I can do this. Um, as I said before, if it's something I'd be really concerned about, um, it's obviously something I'd look into a lot further. Um, but I, like I said, I've, as far as I know, I've, there's twice I've been through this and had the same errors. So whether there's something um, to do with the build or whether it's these other oh optional for the Java bindings. Well there's okay so the Java needs two other or at least one other external package so that that could explain that but I can't explain um why the Python and Ruby bindings don't work and unless possibly they need these two packages. Um, that is a possibility. Uh, apart from that that's as good. I mean SVN should work by itself if I type SVN Oh no, that's not finding a light. Oh, is it because I'm root? No, that's not finding library. So there is serious, something seriously wrong with this then. Uh, rather strange actually uh, let's do sudo find so lib svn underscore star dash one dot so So there are all the source files. Swig pearls there, yes, yeah, so that's why that's worked. But the one for Python and Ruby and the Java one because they've failed on the installation. Nothing to do with the path, is it? Let's try. Um. Let's try this again. No. Has not been installed. I wonder why that is. So that is the warning.
Yeah, it's not installing these libraries for some reason. So there's the bindings there, so it has built them, it just doesn't want to install them. Uh, client. Yes, yeah, so the Perl, Ruby and Python bindings are there. Under Swig. Don't know where the Java ones are. And I can't remember if this worked now. I don't think this did, did it? No. That's got no underscore. Oh yes, there it is. Relink Java HL with the above command before installing it. So is that this command here? SVN underscore client. No, that's missing. Yeah, so it looks like it's because this library is missing, or this, whatever this is, I presume it's a library. It's nowhere to be seen. So to me that indicates that the build hasn't gone successfully. No, that's yeah, it's not doing anything else. So I don't really don't know why that is failing. Um, so I'm gonna have to bear in mind that subversion's broken, um, and that would have to be investigated. So that's a bit unfortunate. So I'm gonna mark it up as built but broken. And that's been like that since the outset as well. So, uh, let's have a look at the dependencies again, see if there's anything obvious. Unless it's one of these that need to be reinstalled that had dependencies missing at the time, but they're now there possibly. Um, yeah, that might be something I'll look at, and uh, if I find anything, I can uh, I'll do a video on it and add it at the end of the build of the complete BLFS build. Look into SVN. Oh, 
Right. So that's as much I can do as I'm at the moment then. But broken for some reason. Okay, yeah, and that was why I was going to go to CMake, wasn't it? Because that was failing at some point. Um, hold a test, that's right. Let's see if we can recall that. Yeah, because it's to do with SVN, so that can't open the library it needs. Right, that's understandable now. So that means that breaks this breaks the tests for CMake. Okay, so that'll have to be looked at as well then. Okay, so um, I don't think Yes, I would install this because at least we'll get the GUI for QT, but um, and I'll put a rebuild after SVN is fixed, if I do get to fix it. Right, so let's now do sudo minus E, uh, make install, so we should get that GUI program, which is that one there. So to prove it, let's run it. And there it appears, and there it is, CMake. So at least that bit's worked. Okay, so let's tidy that up now. And the next package I'm going to rebuild is curl. So let's look for that. So again, we appear to have all the options, all the dependencies. Oops. Let's copy the configure command and see what other options there are. SSL. So we can add lib SSH to support and see arrows we've got. Oh, oh right, it overrides enable threaded resolver is not widely tested, so I'll leave that bit off. I'll just run it with the lib ssh2 and I'll build it and run the tests
Okay, so that has finished testing. Um, that's a hundred percent pass, so that's good. So now let's do the installation. That's all done, so that's complete. So that's curl rebuilt. So next got to do lib asuan. So this was for text live. So let's extract. So have we got any other options? No. Zip of commands, build a comp documentation, HTML plain text. If you wish to build alternate formats, you must have tech, right, okay, so we copy all of this to build it and the documentation. Then we run this command to build the separate documentation, which has completed. Run make check, which is all passed. And then we run these commands to build the default documentation and the additional documentation with those commands. Um, I don't know if we've got a PDF viewer, have we? Doesn't look like, oh, do we have new PDF? Yeah, I wonder if that'll work. Uh, PDF was doc, document directory doc PDF. Yep, so there's the documentation. So that proves that's all worked correctly. So that's lib and rebuilt. So just update the book. Right, so the next package I'm going to do is GNU TLS. That's got a dependency on text live. So let's find that one. Okay, so Run the oops. Run the configure. Check the optional parameters. Let's build this compatibility library. Sounds like it could be useful. And enable GTK. Oh, that's for the API documentation. Ah, oh, so maybe that's all that text live was for. Uh, it doesn't specifically say, but this is GTK doc, doesn't it? So I think that's all we need to do. This might not get anything extra out of this in the end. Uh, 
So I'm going to build that and then immediately run the checks. Right, so that was built okay. Do the install now. And that's done. So that's that one. And the next one I've got is Python to rebuild after blues and GDB, so that's Python 3 yeah, GDB for some tests and blues obviously wasn't installed at the time so let's extract Python 3 So build it with this option, uh, this configure command. Let's see what we've got here. So I'll add LTO as it's the final time hopefully they're going to be building this in case it does help with the performance. 
It says it probably doesn't, but we can try it. Let's build.
Right, so that's built. I'm going to run the tests now.
Okay, so that has got some failures. Um, two tests, test disk chills and test embedded and known to fail. So they're the two failures we've got. So looks like it's rerun those ones, but obviously still with failure. So let's now install reinstall Python 3. Let's put this in here for the documentation. It's probably already there. We'll do this link again. Oh, what happened there? That moved. I think I can get rid of that, can I? Uh, I'll bookmark that actually. Even though it's not exactly the right link. But it might help, possibly. Uh, let's run this link again. And I think that was already set. Uh, let's just echo dollar Python docs. Yeah, it is. So that doesn't need to be done again. So that's Python. Python 3. Close that down. And the next one I'm going to do is LLVM. Let me just locate that one. Yes, um, LLVM to be rebuilt after graph is and recommon mark. So LLVM there it is. Right, so recommon mark is something that I haven't installed yet. Everything else is in here, so let's put this up. It needs common mark, and that's it. So I need to get this up on the browser. Um, LLVM. Okay, so common mark is the first package to install. Let's uh, save this. Extract it. And we build it with the usual instructions. Install it and test it. So that looks all successful. Oh, sorry, it's still running. Okay, I thought I'd finished that. No, yeah, now it's finished. So none, nothing's failed. That's all installed correctly. So the next one we've got is recommon mark let's put that in so let's download that one tidy this up extract recommon mark and 
build it and install it. Right, really common mark is now deprecated in favour of my ST parser for this reason. A lot of tests have been disabled because they do not pass with recent versions of Sphinx. So it can be partially tested with this command. Okay, yeah, 12 deselected and 58 warnings, so some of it has, has run. So that's all that can be done. Oops. too far. Okay, so now we're in a position to rebuild LLVM. 